Hey everybody, this is Scott Dowell here. We have great news in that the SDXL official control net models are now available. Now, not all of them, and they're going to be coming out over time as they come out of the oven, but there's quite a few that are released now, so I want to get you set up on how to use those. Now, we're going to need a couple things to do this. First of all, I highly, highly recommend you install the manager. So I'm going to walk through that super fast, like 15 seconds, just to show you where to get it and how to install it. Uh, and I did that in another video, but I mistakenly said get fetch instead of get clone. So I'm going to show you the right way. And then we're going to grab the models from the SDXL, the official uh, Hugging Face uh, repository. And then I'm going to show you how to get the preprocessors, which we also need. So just three things to install real quick. And this video is not going to be all about the installation. It's going to be about the use. Uh, so let's get started. Okay, one of the things about Comfy that's a little frustrating is that there's so many custom nodes available, no way to manage them. So there is a manager that's available that somebody wrote, uh, Lieutenant Dr. Data, and uh, love, by the way, love his stuff. So whatever he's doing uh, so far has been just fantastic. So I'm gonna show you super fast how to install the manager, uh, which is the button here that you may have seen in other episodes. So let's do that super fast. Basically, you're gonna go to a Git. I'll put the link down below, and it's just the Comfy manager, and you're just gonna go to code, and you're gonna grab this here, super simple. Then you're going to go to your comfy local installation, go to custom nodes, and then in here, if you just go up, now obviously I'm on Windows, but if you're on Mac, um, you can do kind of the same thing, um, except for this part, you just do the command. You'll have to just open a terminal window and, and uh, CD to this directory. And then we uh, we had that copied, we copied that URL from the GitHub in there, where it's to git clone, and then paste in that URL. You'll see that it'll flow in a custom node in here and you're good to go. So now we just need to restart Comfy and uh, we'll see what it looks like. Okay, and now I've reloaded Comfy and you can see we now have a manager button here. And we're gonna use this to install a few of the things that are required for ControlNet. Now we can do it the hard way and go through all of the associated gets and so on, but the manager does that for us. So let's just use it. You click on it, you're gonna see there's all kinds of things here. I did a video on this, so I'm not gonna belabor this point, but we're gonna go right to install custom nodes and we're gonna go right to the top and type in ControlNet search and you can see there's all these custom node packages that are available remember we don't want a package that does all of the work for us we want a package that gives us the pieces to allow us to create our own workflow so you can go to civet you can download a workflow that's just a bunch of ui buttons and so on uh, but i'd rather learn how this works which is the whole goal behind this by the way uh, comfy said it best himself this is a back end with just a front end thrown on top of it it's all about the process and not about the front end so here we need to grab the preprocessors. And when you see the list, you're gonna see is there are two control net preprocessors by the same guy. This is the one you wanna use, it's the work and process version. So we're just gonna click install and that's gonna install all of the preprocessors. And that's pretty much all we need to do here. So close this and then you'll have to restart Comfy again because it does not refresh automatically. Now this time you notice when it is installing that it's gonna go out and do a couple extra steps here and it's gonna go grab some of those models for us. So your startup time will be a little bit slower this time. All right, now the company is fully loaded. We should be able to do add node and see control net preprocessors here along with all the preprocessors that you may need. Okay, so now let's install the SDXL models and you're gonna find those over on Hugging Face. Now they're called control LORAs, but understand they're not LORAs in the sense that you're going to install them or use them like you would a LORA, uh, but this has to do more with the architectural implementation. So don't get all caught up in that. It means that they're smaller and more memory efficient by the way that they're architected. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna install these as well. And again, if you use this three dot menu over here, you can do clone repository, and then you know, hand you all this, just hit copy. And then to install them, you would go to your comfy installation, go to models, and go to control net, and you can place them in here. Now, as an alternative, if you're using automatic 11.11 and a lot of other implementations, you can actually save yourself some time by using this extra model paths.yaml file. If we look at mine, if you look at this, you can see that here's my installation of Automatic 11.11, and I just put my models into his control net folder there, and the Comfy installation here will find it. So if you install it here, you only have to put it in one place to use it in Comfy and Automatic 11.11. I use both. Uh, so this is a great option for not copying a lot of models around. But you're gonna use the exact same technique by using the get clone feature, but it's already copied to your clipboard. Once you've got that in place, you can see this is what your result will be. You'll have everything inside of the control net folder. And again, I put my other version, the old 1.1s inside of their own directory. And then I have the new control LORAs in their own folder as well. Okay, now that we have everything loaded, let's see if it's working right. Now let's show you what these preprocessors actually do. So to do this, we're gonna load an image. So if you watched my episode yesterday, we took the revision technique, 
which is a new thing you can do with SDXL, which allows you to take multiple images and run the clip classifier against them and basically pull out the context of the images to create a new one that's kind of a combination of all of that together. So pretty cool technique. And again, this graph and that graph are all going to be uploaded to the YouTube member area. So if you are a sponsor of this channel or higher, I really appreciate your efforts to keep the channel going. And uh, you guys mean the world to me. So I'm going to upload all these graphs there for you. There'd be a link to a Google Drive where you can grab that image, download it, and just drag it into your comfy interface and load those graphs right away. Once again, thank you guys so much. All right, so here, let's take a look what these preprocessors do real quick. Uh, so let's load one up. So let's use the, I have a couple that I really like. Uh, the first one that's more, uh, probably the most popular one is the canny edge detector. Um, I like the head one, which is more of a soft detector. Uh, and then there's other ones like the depth map, for example. Um, well, the normal map and depth map are different things, by the way. Normal shows light direction on a surface, where depth is showing more or less height information. So be aware they are not the same thing. I know it gets confusing if you've ever used Blender before. A lot of people know that distinction, but if you don't, uh, that's uh, uh, something you know now. Uh, they're not the same thing. So let's do the edge detector here. And by the way, if you are loading in, by the way, if you're loading one of these preprocessors for the first time, the model will download and that could take some time. So if you check your console window, you'll see that it's pulling it down. It only has to do that once. So if you're wondering why things are taking so long, that'd be the reason. Uh, so if we run this real quick, you can see what the depth map looks like. And we can see that the face is marked here and anything white is closer to the camera. Anything dark is farther away. But you see there's not a lot of detail here, which is why people like a combination of, say, canny and depth, because you can use more than one control net. Uh, so fingers, for example, canny is very good at outlines for individual digits, but depth map shows which ones are closer to the camera. So the combination of those two work very well on hands, for example. Uh, let's do another one. Let's grab the canny one. This one's very quick. Yeah. And again, you can use these settings here to determine the sensitivity to what types of lines you want, whether you want a rough, really just kind of rough sketch of it, or if you want a lot of detail, um, use the one that you'd prefer. For this demonstration, I think we're going to stick with depth because that's pretty much my favorite one, personally. I'm sure everyone has their favorite, but that one I like the most uh, because it doesn't have a lot of detail. So it kind of opens the door uh, for interpretation. Uh, plus, if you have things like buildings, for example, and you like the outline or shape of a building, but you want to see it as a Roman Coliseum or you want to see it as a sci-fi set, uh, wherever it is, it has the rough shape and the perspective is held in place by the depth map. Uh, so I think that's pretty cool. Loaded in the rest of our graph now. Uh, so let's start with our standard checkpoint, which will be SDXL. Yeah. I know this text is small. Sorry about that. Not much I can do about it. Uh, there is no font uh, thing in here to load a larger font, unfortunately. And I've done what I can to make the magnification as big as possible. Let's go ahead and load in our control net next. So we'll do loaders and then control net model. And again, you should see the giant list here if you've done it well. And note that it does use those folders I put them into, uh, which is a nice way to organize things. Now, there are two versions of each of the ones that are available right now, the 128 and the 256, uh, depending on the uh, memory that your computer has in it. Uh, just make sure you pick the one that's appropriate for the preprocessor. So this control net model is expecting to see this type of image. You're going to see in a second, it's going to ask us for an image. It does not mean this one. It means this one. So if you already have a depth map that you love and you want to use it, you do not need to preprocess it again. You can just load it in with this. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. Now, if you don't know what the next step is, a great thing about Comfy is it knows the process. So if you drag this out, it shows you there are really only two, Control Net Apply and Control Net Apply Advanced. We're going to use Advanced because there's some things about this that I want to show. So notice that it's expecting an image. Again, it's not this. It's expecting this. So let's go ahead and just load that here. Rearrange my graphs, but we'll keep this uh, depth map handy just because it's kind of interesting. We'll just roughly roll our things in here. What I think is also very interesting right now is you notice we're dealing with the conditioning of this, we're not dealing with the imagery, which you may think, well, I'm dealing with an image, therefore this will be the image processing part. It's actually in the conditioning part, uh, which I think is pretty interesting. So let's go ahead and do our standard prompts. So we'll load in an encoder for our positive, and we'll load in an encoder for our negative, and we'll color them. I always try to make this look as nice as possible, so when I do upload it to 
the uh, member area, you guys will have a graph that is sane, at least. I might even go through and rename some of these nodes if I'm feeling frisky that day. Okay, and what we want to do now is we want to take these and load them in here. So here's our positive, and here's our negative. So we're not going to use the ones from uh, our regular clip. We're going to use these into the control net here. There you go. Now we have now satisfied this control net that is expecting, again, from the depth loader, is expecting a depth map, which disappeared. I don't know why. If we wanted to do another control net, we would load another control net model, and then we would duplicate this and then hook it right in in a chain. So you can actually use control net into control net into control net all day long. Uh, just make sure that you're loading the appropriate control net model and preprocessor or image that satisfies this control net for each one of those individual steps. Okay, now we'll just roll it through a regular case sampler. Pull it out, there we go. And again, we need our model. And we will need the VAE in a second. So I'm just gonna drag that up here and put a reroute node uh, so we can grab it when we need it. Um, I do that to avoid lines crossing all over the place. Um, I'll make the graph look a little nicer before I hand it out tonight, but we'll do something. There, now it's all, all happy. Like you have some sort of a, a big um, bus of lines across the top, which would absolutely drive me nuts. We're gonna talk about graph neatness in another episode because I use another thing called a pipe which is a lot nicer to look at, but this is at least showing you the individual flow. Uh, so forgive the lines for today. It's a learning experience. Well, that's what we'll chalk it up to. All right, in this case, we need a latent. So we're just gonna grab a regular empty latent. And remember with SDXL, it has to be a 1024 or larger on the long edge. So we're gonna go to the square here, just for giggles. And we do need a negative as well. So grab our negative. So we have all of our things uh, set here. Now for your settings here, again, you do what you'd like to do. I'm going to go with like say 35. Again, this doesn't make it better. Well, it does to a point, but then there's the diminishing returns where it might take you 10 times longer, but you're only getting a very few pixels changed. So I think 35 is a good place to start here. I tend to like a little bit lower CFG. Again, the lower, it means that you're going to have more freedom for prompt, uh, kind of what, what it's interpreting the prompt as uh, versus much higher here will give you more accurate prompt, but it will also cost you a bit from contrast standpoint, they tend to get a bit sharper, a little bit noisier. Uh, so I think seven's a nice place to be. And then for a sampler, you can use Euler or you can pick whatever you'd like. I tend to like uh, right today, we're gonna use the DPM plus plus three M simple differential equation one for a GPU. That's a mouthful. So <laughs> just use the three, the DPM PP three M SDE. And then the scheduler lets you something exciting. Let's use exponential. Again, play with these because you might find something you really like. Uh, each sampler is a different mathematical model against how you want to pull information out of this latent. Uh, so we're just going to go with that. Scheduler also uh, matters quite a bit. So let's go ahead and then decode this thing. And here we need our happy VAE, our happy VAE, happy tree VAE. And let's, oops, grab this dot and we'll pull this to a save image so we have one uh, for giggles. All right, so we need to prompt this thing. Uh, let's go with, uh, what does she look like? Let's drag her over here, by the way. Um, I like to see all these kind of like it's almost a rough um, graphical user interface here. We'll make our controls all handy so we can zoom in so you can actually see the text as well as the beginning image, the pre-processed image here, and then we'll have our final, we'll take up a bunch of space right here. So let's, let's get in here. All right, so let's talk a little bit about the settings uh, before we run our prompt, which we'll move over here. These strengths here are very interesting. So the strength is obviously how much it's going to apply over the, over the course of the entire image. So this is 100% right now. But what's more interesting is the start and end. So we have no idea what's gonna come up when we hit Q prompt, uh, but we could say, you know what, go ahead and do whatever you wanna do and tell us say about, oh, 20% of the way through the image and then you must pay attention to the depth map here. Um, or you could say, you know what, go ahead and, and start with the depth map and, and follow it, but say about 80% of the way through the step count here, we're gonna go ahead and then uh, just not pay attention to the depth map anymore and you can do whatever you want to do. So you could have this adhere the entire time span or you can have it adhere just at the beginning and just the end or in the middle. Uh, so this is really kind of interesting and I prefer this one over the simpler one uh, just because we have this control and obviously if it's too much you can always lower the strength a little bit as well. Uh, so let's just leave it like this just for giggles and see what happens. Now let's give it a prompt. Uh, let's go with uh, let's go with our standard cyborg thing because that's what I like. So alien cyborg female on an alien ship. And let's see what happens. All right, what we got was pretty terrible. So let's uh, let's fix it up a bit. 
Uh, we would like a photo. Photo of a cyborg, of a cyborg female on an alien ship. Let's try that. But you can see we do have adherence to the outline. Obviously, the face is in the same place. The hat's similar. Uh, so it is looking at what we have downloaded. I don't know why this preview is not showing up. There we go. That's much more exciting. I don't know why this preview is not showing up over here. Let's oh, let's pull that one in again. We'll just get rid of it and roll another preview over here. And that should calculate. There we go. And there you go. So that's how the depth map works. And again, all the control nets work in their own way, uh, but each one has a kind of a rhyme or reason to how it behaves. And again, you can stack them by putting other ones in between here. So you have one control net and you can put another one inside of here. Everybody, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoy these models. Let me know in the comments what you think. And uh, once again, thanks to everybody who supports the channel. Uh, couldn't do this without you. And uh, everybody take care, stay safe, and I'll catch you all next time.